Nuclear radiation can be detected using a Geiger-Muller tube, but it can also be detected using photographic film. Or something called a cloud chamber. Now we'll take a look at both of these and we'll suggest an advantage and a disadvantage for each. Now back in 1896, Henri Becquerel discovered this strange effect which was the first detection of natural radiation and he by accident put a bag of uranium salts in his drawer on top of a photographic film, on top of a photographic plate. Now between them was a key. So he was very surprised in the morning when uh, he happened to look at his photographic plate and he found that there was an imprint of a key and the photograph, the photographic plate had been exposed around the key. This led him to the understanding that there is something being emitted by the uranium salts and that would be alpha or beta particles in this instance. So photographic plate contains silver nitrate and when silver nitrate is ionized by radiation such as alpha, beta or gamma, then it will change color. And that's what has happened here. So photographic films are pretty useful, um, especially because they are very cost effective. So there's a, an advantage. They're cost effective for detecting radiation but they're not so useful because you don't get immediate results. So the results are not immediate. Photographic film is used in the nuclear industry as film badges and that tracks the exposure of workers in nuclear power plants or even in hospitals to radiation so that um, their dose can be controlled and that they don't get overexposed. So those, that's photographic film. What about cloud chambers? Now I see we've got a picture here of the, the trails left by an aeroplane in the sky, but cloud chambers uh, do a very similar thing. Now in a cloud in the sky, the water droplets tend to form on the dust particles that are emitted or given out by the engines of a, of a plane. But they'll also collect on any charged ions. And this is the idea that's used in a cloud chamber. Remember that radiation ionizes atoms and molecules. So if you have an alpha particle which is moving in this path, it will leave behind it a whole trail of ionized air molecules or water molecules depending if it's what it's going through. And that's what's used in a cloud chamber. You can actually make one fairly easily. Um, what you do is you get yourself a plastic tank, you cool the bottom of that tank down to about minus 70 using some dry ice, some solid carbon dioxide. So that's pretty cold down there. On the lid you would put a rag soaked in alcohol. So the alcohol would um, evaporate inside the chamber and you can uh, encourage this to happen by putting a, a hot water bottle on the top which would make the alcohol evaporate. And so what you create in this chamber is a super saturated mixture of alcohol vapor. This is a saturated alcohol vapor. And this alcohol vapor as it gets closer to the cool bottom will want to condense 
And if an alpha particle, let's say, were to, or any other type of radiation, it could be a cosmic ray, for example, were to come into this cloud chamber, like so, what you would see is lots of, you would actually see a trail of condensation because the saturated alcohol would condense forming a trail just like that behind a, a, a plane. It would condense on the ions that the alpha particle creates. This means you can actually see the tracks that are created from alpha, beta, gamma and cosmic rays types of radiation. Here is a view inside a cloud chamber and you can just see the little um, little tiny droplets of alcohol vapor that are starting to condense and you can see the tracks of the alpha and beta particles. Here's the source that's spitting out this radiation in random directions and the tracks of the condensed alcohol which is condensing on the ions left behind by the alpha and beta particles and this is real-time information that we're seeing here we can see the effects of this radiation as it happens the downside is that the tracks don't stay around for very long so it's difficult to uh, to record how many of them are happening and uh, especially if you get a source which is very active so an advantage of a cloud chamber is that the effects of radiation, the effects or the trails of radiation can be seen immediately. The drawback is that the trails or the tracks disappear quickly. This appear quickly and so it's difficult to keep a record of the radiation tracks as they appear. So those are two ways of detecting radiation. Uh, photographic film is the simplest method and that's uh, nice and cheap uh, but it, you have to wait for the results because you have to uh, process the film or a cloud chamber which gives you immediate results, immediate view into, into radiation events that are happening, but those are difficult to record because the trails don't hang around for very long. They disappear quickly.